Good evening and welcome back. This is day two of our ECL Elite coverage right here on twitch.tv slash sportsgamergg. My name is Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin, and I'm joined alongside by my very illustrious partner, Brandon Bigsby, a.k.a. B Major. And Brandon, we had an interesting, some would say surprising, others would say expected result uh, yesterday with eight treads going up Three games to nothing here against Frolunda in the finals, but that is not all she wrote. You have to win four, so for Frolunda, they have to really fight back up a vertical hill to get to their point to victory here tonight. Exactly, Nick, and it's fun because you have to remember, this is a territory that Frolunda is not not used to they've had these situations where in finals they have been down with three to one three to two deficits and have come back to reverse sweep in some instances even that series a few years back against Tavu comes to mind so this is a team that has been in this situation before they're not unused to it, it doesn't phase them it just means that you have to be near perfect from here on out which against an HRS team that played as well as they did yesterday no easy task for really any team even one of the quality of Rolanda. No, especially with a team like them, you know that they can play well, you know they can come back from behind. However, you're up against a team that I think on paper played near perfect hockey yesterday. And uh, for them, it's hard to beat a team that's playing so well. But let's do this. Before we get into today's action as the players are making their way into the play area to the locker room, we will say, let's take a look back at yesterday's highlights to get you caught up on what you might have missed if you didn't catch it. Moments away from puck drop game number one of this best of seven series. We are finally here and the time has finally arrived. H-Reds in response here looking to get some pushback. Nervous moment there for Cape having to try to go butterfly turnover here. Space and all alone he scores! Picking the corner. Who else would it be? Villa Poika scores the opening goal here in this series. You know, his pass off the mark. Cape will play it. Out to his left, but Hatred's again able to regain possession. Pulling into the corner, back to the point. King of Apes, Domi, D to D. That shot save, rebound scores! Hatred's double it up. Villapoika's second of the game. All smiles for Hatred's. It's two to nothing. Right place, right time for Villapoika. That's not by accident. That's why he has so many goals. Positioning is half the battle right there. Excellent job by him to go wider. Wait for, you know, open up for that one time. Once he saw the shot was taken, collapsing back in on the goaltender, picking up that rebound perfectly and putting that one home. That's going to be a huge mental win for Atrez if they're able to win in that fashion. Villapoika for Nikki Dangles. Two men to beat. Nikki Dangles breaking through, flying poke check, and it's in. Hreds take a three to nothing lead here in the third period. What a play by Nikki Dangles and the defending champs looking good here late in the third period. Nikki Dangles pass off the mark. There's a foot race for this one. No icing is the call. One back shot scores. Nikki Dangles, second of the game, never give up on the play. Four to nothing, Hreds here in game one. Looking to get one more on the board, but that's their mental state right now. They are confident going in. They got to be feeling confident after that first game. The D to D work here, Villapoika. There's the one timer blocked, rebound scores. The loose puck, Nikki Dangles, able to find it. Hreds strike first, a costly mistake from Pleamaker with that tripping call. Out to Faze's right. A little bit of trouble. Tamu pinching in. His shot stopped by Faze as well. Another one. He scores! On the backhand, we have the first goal of the series for Frolunda. And since sometimes that's what it takes, throw pucks on, you never know what will happen. That was just exactly what they needed right there. That was just great job to follow up by Tamu right there. He just sticks with it and is able to put that one home. Again, four straight shutouts dating back to last season's final. They won't be able to make it five. One timer blocked. Second shot scores. Eki doubles it up for Lunda. Lead for the first time here in the finals. On the wrong side to be able to pick that one up, but a good job there by for Lunda. Surviving that scare, keeping that lead intact, at least for the moment. Domi, that shot, another chance they score. Incredible, Villapoika 
ever the opportunist. One might say the ultimate opportunist. This one's for Nick. He plays with a little bit of an edge. And it is tied at two apiece. Throw me back for King of Apes. Good movement there. Nicky Dangles, though, again, nowhere to go. Loose pucks all over the ice. Nicky Dangles, the shot, it's in! Nicky Dangles gets the winner. H-Reds win it in overtime and take a 2-0 series lead. Heartbreak for Frolunda Sim with that one. That is a tough, tough goal to give up. Number three at the end of this broadcast. Hey, we'll get to hear from our friends, Mr. S5 Penguin. B major one more time and an early goal. H-Reds strike quick. Nikki Dangles has it one to nothing for the defending champions. They get the overtime winner. Nikki Dangles, golden helmet wearer, team's leading scorer, and you can see why. Continues to get better and better as the seasons go on. They double it up. King of Apes makes it two to nothing here within the first five minutes of the first period. When you've already lost two games, you get into another hole, you almost feel like nah, it's, you're already in desperation mode, and you kind of have to be in. That's just going to feed the A-treads. And another shot that sneaks in. Three to nothing. Nikki Dangles second of the game. The champs running away with it here in the first period. Adidas did one-timer kick save there by FaZe. Great look. First great look of the game for, for Lunda. But A-Treads again are right back in. Let's see what Benito can do down low for Nikki Dangles. They score! What a shot by Villapoika. Four to nothing for Lunda. Getting torn apart here in game three. Again, series is far from over. We've seen a lot of crazy comebacks. You remember one of the times, I think, one of our first casts of a championship for Lunda overcame a 3-1 deficit to beat Havu in the finals. And you talked about, you know, Havu giving away the 3-0 lead later on. I mean, it's... Eh go either way and a shot there and a goal Eki just 34 seconds into the second period gets for Lunda on the board we'll get another look at that one exactly what the doctor ordered for for Lunda for Lunda are at risk of being swept in the finals two seasons in a row yeah, I, it just goes, oh my goodness, there's another Here's turnover. Here's Villapoika, <laughs> tried the dragon on the rebound. Who else? Nikki Dangles shovels it home. Five to one the score, a three to nothing. Series lead for H Reds. One win away from going back to back, the first team to ever do it. And that was games one through three yesterday called by the ever amazing uh, Tugi and Sin, who we will hear from very soon. Obviously, in those games for Lunda, down three games to nothing right now, Brandon. But the highlight, I think, of that series, this series so far, Nikki Dangles. Of the seven of the 16 goals he's uh, that that we've seen so far in this series, he's had seven. Villapoikas had four, so that's 11 of the 16 goals from just two players on the ice. Yeah, and not only that, but talking about Nikki, how about this as well? He has seven goals on eight shots. <laughs> So not only is he scoring, but he is Mr. Efficiency in the process. And I mean, Nick, we know how good and how star-studded this H Reds team is. And you really never know who is going to step up at certain points. But both Villa Poica and Nikki Dangles has really been where they have really made their chances offensively. We called their name. It felt like time after time after time after time yesterday. And it felt like there was just no end to it with the way they were playing. Yeah, it was kind of crazy to see that. And in our uh, behind-the-scenes chat, we're giving stat line updates and kind of doing numbers and putting things together. And the minute that was going, and Nikki Dangles has six of the 14 goals, another goal went in. And I was like, oh, that's seven now. Uh, <laughs> at some point, if you're going to be for Lunda, you kind of have to slow that down. But uh, right now, it's really not favoring them. Yeah, and that's a big thing because not only that, but you have to remember Ferlunda now in a situation to where really not only do you need to play 
near perfectly, but they need some breaks to go their way as well. We saw Hreds get a couple of those breaks in our games yesterday. Now for London needs some of that luck being down three to nothing. And not only that, but I'm sure they're going to look to play a little bit better as well. They didn't have a lot of offensive success. Only three goals in three games. That is not the for London that we have come to know and love, but that has to go to credit to Hreds for the way they've played defensively, not allowing for London to get comfortable offensively and play their game. For London going to look to adapt, look to adjust, us to try to get back into the series yeah we talk about adjusting let's take a look at the matchup screen right now kind of on paper uh we have an interesting process here we came into yesterday's game and we said oh wow identical on paper except for the 100 penalty kill uh not too long after that a power play goal by h reds and now you see the numbers 16 goals for differential a seven goals against a differential this is a very different matchup now at least on paper it almost looks like two completely different seasons, you would think, when usually in any season for London's participating in the numbers a lot better than that right there. So it's just funny, Nick. It just kind of goes to show you how the three games change things so much statistically for these two teams. Like you said, yesterday we were talking about how for London, h -Reds, if I'm correct, they were only separated by a goal in terms of the goals against. Now for London, seven more goals allowed then H-Reds and the goals for really not that much different as well in that same aspect. H-Reds scoring seven or eight goals yesterday in the Ferlundas three widened that gap a bit. So we expect this to be a lot closer than what the stats may show. And the stats may be favoring and flattering H-Reds a little bit in terms of the season because of how well they played in those three games last night. Absolutely. And as we talk about how well H-Reds has played, we actually got to do something fun. We got to speak to the other side for Lunda. We got to talk to Loimu a second time. And uh, today he had a little bit of different things to say than what he did yesterday. Let's take a look. So I'm here with Loimu from Fro Lunda. Now Loimu, I know you've been here before. Just how excited are you to be back in the finals one more time? time. Yeah, I'm very excited. We have been here multiple times and it's always a nice place to come back and let's hope we win this one. Does it feel different each time you come to the finals or is it kind of the same every time you walk in? Yeah, I think every every situation is a little bit different, but all, all uh, the atmosphere is quite similar, but always very excited to play these games. Are you more excited, more excited or would you say you're a little bit nervous, nervous as well as coming well. into tonight? Nah, not nervous at all. Pretty, I'm pretty used to this, so. Pretty, pretty excited, but not nervous. What's going to be the key to success to take down number one eight treads right. going into this matchup? I think we just have to play our own game and trust on that and not worry, worry about that much what the opponent do. Just let us like dictate the pace. And those are the comments from yesterday. Uh, so, and, and what's interesting there, Brandon, is you know a team that knows you know really what to do on the ice had a little bit of a challenge so uh kind of interesting to hear that and then let's again now hear what he had to say today kind of change up your game plan was there any uh types of uh, activity happening what was what was that end uh what was that result at the end of the match what did you guys say to each other <laughs> uh well we went to go for a few beers and talked a little bit about that but we will actually change now eki will be center and parties will be right wing so maybe we'll try to get something extra extra to our uh, game with that like transaction so we will try that Absolutely. And changing that up could be something different. Uh, obviously, that game two you referenced, a little bit of a heartbreaker after you kind of picked up some speed. How do you maintain that success that you had midway through that game for now four games that you have to face off tonight? Yeah, I just 
think that we gotta like focus on every every the back bounces and try to like position ourselves correctly to avoid the like the the goals were quite weird like lots of bounces just maybe we just need to be at the right places and like focus on that like loyal well, wishing, wishing you nothing but the best and the best of luck tonight good luck out there and my best to you and the team yeah thank you So you can see Aloimu, who's poised, uh, just basically said, hey, we're shaking off what happened yesterday. We can't really control that. Uh, two things we can't control, people in time. They don't have a lot of time left, but like he said, start with one. You have to win one game there, and then you kind of build from there, right? Yeah, and it just kind of goes to show the experience that this for London team has. And you heard it, the mentality, just one game at a time. They are where they are, down 3 nothing. but you're not going to be able to get it all back and get back into the series with a one goal or one play here. You just kind of have to work at it, take it a period at a time, a game at a time, and just hope that your play can be your best to see it through and make this comeback happen. So I love that interview with you and Loimu because it just kind of shows how much experience for London is. We talk about all the time, the composure that they have. You you can see it right there through his answers when you talk to him. Yeah, absolutely. And I did confirm with Loimu right before we went on air, he kept the shoes the same. So there is some confidence in the uh, the flyers he's got there, the, the shoes he's got on. Hopefully that brings him some W's as we take a look at the bracket here and kind of give you updated on where we are in this matchup. As we said, H-Reds up three games to nothing. But for Frolunda, you mentioned a little bit ago, Brandon, yesterday's broadcast, the quarterfinals, facing against a really good IQ uh, uh, Havu gaming team. They were able to do some pretty remarkable things against that six seed, move on to Fariastad, and then you described that in that semifinals matchup, it wasn't as it was on paper. Yeah, and that's what's really interesting because throughout these playoffs, Verlunda has had to play a lot of tight games. It's not been easy for them at all. They had two tough opponents, like you mentioned, Nick, and Havu in the first round. How often did you say that? And in Fediestad in the semifinals, a team that they are familiar with, but an improved Fediestad team that was looking to go in and really make a run, considering that they were a little bit doubted coming in to the season. So Verlunda, it's not been an easy ride at all. We knew it wasn't going to get any easier with this h red series in the finals and unfortunately i think they would hope that it would lighten up from this point forward for them to maybe make a comeback yeah and they didn't face a very light challenge there in the semifinals and that was a lot of resilience for lack of a better uh funny pun team name uh on what they had to do to get to four games win those and punch their ticket into the final so for london no stranger to this kind of adversity yeah, and that's something that you always have to keep in mind. And during the highlight portion, you heard Sin say it. This series is not over. We've seen crazy things happen. So much so to where we've seen Fralunda make these comebacks before in the finals. So might be three to nothing. h -Red's obviously in a very favorable position, but... Verlunda, do not sleep on them at all. They have nothing to lose from this point forward. They have the experience and they have the ability to pull this thing off. Just going to be a really tough challenge for them to do that with the way HRS has been playing, not just during this final series, but all season long. Yeah, and as you mentioned, HRED's playing astoundingly well right now. And that's the adversity side we talked about with Verlunda. However, we have the other side to talk about HREDs, and what better way to talk about how well they've been doing so far than to hear from one of the men himself, that's King of Apes. We were able to speak to him right before uh, the game here, right before we went live, and he had a lot to say on the success that he's brought to the table so far with his team. I am here with the right defenseman of HREDs, King of Apes. Firstly, thank you for taking the time to talk with us for a few minutes. How are you guys feeling going into the night? Up three to nothing, yesterday playing pretty well. Gotta imagine you're feeling confident about your chances going into this thing. Yeah, uh, we, we feel kind of great. Uh, I think we are just uh, focusing to get the final uh, uh, victory and uh, yeah. I don't know what else. say. It feels kind of good, and uh, we know we have a huge advantage here, so we just uh, need to find a way to kill the series. Absolutely. Well, you guys have been dominant all season, but you felt that you had a few aces up your sleeves coming into the series, and yesterday it felt like just that dominant play, and it felt like things were really flowing for you guys, being able to take all three games to go into the night with a nice, comfortable lead. What do you feel made the difference for you guys' play in those three games yesterday? 
Mm, I think uh, uh, yesterday we played our uh, best games in the season. I think it might do something with uh, being the land setup and playing with the guys and see them. I like we played so much better. And I think we are now playing at the level that we should. And uh, yeah, I think it's just we have so many variation and uh, we have to think up our, about our gameplay so much. And I think it's uh, sees in the eye, in the eyes. Yeah, absolutely. I know that's something that you had mentioned a few times that you guys felt that you hadn't played at that level you expected of yourselves. But nevertheless, final question for you here. You're just one win away from becoming the first team in ECL history to win back-to-back -back championships. And not only that, but to do it against the team in for London that you know so well and has that pedigree. How much would this mean for this HRS team to be the first to accomplish that and really write themselves into the history books? Mm, well, personally, I think that uh, we just uh, focus to winning the games, so it really <laughs> doesn't matter if we have a first or third. We just uh, uh, we just focus to win those tournaments we are participating. So I think just uh, our winning mentality. It's just uh, go to the tournament and try to win it, whatever it takes. And uh, yeah, but of course, uh, winning this tournament means a lot to our guys. And uh, yeah, what what else, what else can I say? Yeah, we we <laughs> we very uh, much like to win games and uh, tournaments, and we love winning. But you know, what can I say about it? <laughs> hey, man, fair enough. Is what's make you guys the best. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us, and uh, best of luck to you guys. Yeah, thank you. I know you got to speak to him there, Brandon. Great job, by the way. And he said some interesting stuff even off camera. Some things obviously we'll reserve for another time. But one of the most interesting things that kind of came across was his humility. Just the whole team's confidence exuding but not presented, if that makes sense. And I love that so much about this HRS team. And obviously them being one of the more confident teams and a team that is not necessarily afraid to show their personality, but what is so great about them is that they know how to have that confidence, have that personality, but yet it's still an all business approach. They know the job at hand, they know the task at hand, and it's not confidence that turns into cockiness or arrogance. They know exactly what they need to do. They know the quality of side that they see in for London on the other end and we were even talking to him and king of apes knows this series is not over they might be up three to nothing they might be in a favorable position but they notice for london team has a lot of talent anything can happen they could go in and win four games straight reverse sweep and we're talking about what would be arguably the greatest comeback in the history of the ecl obviously h reds hoping to avoid that but you said the perfect word nick just the humility that h reds shows and king of apes especially in that interview really really does set them apart from just so many teams especially at the caliber that they play at uh, you said so many poignant and, and relevant things there brandon uh, you mentioned talent you mentioned humility, you mentioned greatness, you mentioned victory. And as we get you ready for puck drop, I mean, all of those things are a perfect segue to introduce some of the most confident, talented, best people I have the pleasure to know. That is Tugi and Sin. So my salmon shirted colored friend, I went along with you for this ride, Tugi. We are here. I'm ready for game day. I know Brandon is. Are you guys ready? When H-Reds makes as big of a statement as they do on the ice, we got to step up our game here too, you know? <laughs> but no, I mean, I am so ready to see what happens here today. I mean, Sin, obviously, we talked a lot about it off stream. And it's one of those things where as much as you want to say, hey, it looks like it's probably over, you never know with a team like Verlanda. Yeah, we've seen this team do a lot of interesting things. And... Uh, we've been had the pleasure of watching them in championships for a very long time now. Last season obviously didn't go they didn't go their way. They have something that they want to prove, and they're in the similar situation to where they found themselves in the last season. But with the history behind this team, the skill behind this team, you still have this feeling that they could make something happen. I think that's what makes this next game, especially the tone of it, how how we see them play. It's going to be so important uh, how they start and and kind of the beginning opening ten minutes of it. Absolutely. Now, again, I mean, I think we've we've all talked about this at length in terms of what we expect for this game and kind of looking forward to what the action's going to be today. 
throughout this broadcast as well. Again, worth mentioning as we covered on yesterday's broadcast as well. Uh, throughout the day, we'll be unveiling our final award winners as well. Of course, yesterday, Sin, a clean sweep for the Sawo contingent. Uh, Nikkei winning transfer of the season, uh, Vatu comeback player of the season, and Yurska for rookie of the year. It was an incredible season for Sawo, as we saw with the bracket that was on screen not that long ago. They were our two seed before falling. Uh, intrigued to see uh, what we have here today with these uh, next three. It's top forward, top defenseman, and top goaltender. Uh, Sawo players have a decent chance, but I can't help but think we'll see some representation from this finals matchup too. Yeah, hard to not picture that again. So many good teams in this division. Uh, yeah, Sabo did some crazy things, but I mean, there's so many other stories. I mean, we saw it yesterday when we were talking about the two IQ player representations along with the Rookie of the Year. They had a phenomenal year, you know, predicted to be a bubble team, getting that five seed. The uh, Goons, again, making it back in the playoffs, not in the seeding that they wanted, but, you know, really kind of making it tough for Atreids. I think every game of that first round series went to overtime despite them being swept. So, I mean, there's a lot of great players here, and we're going to see some of that representation in the awards, I I'm sure. Uh Absolutely. And if I'm not mistaken here, we are going to be able to unveil our first award of the day forward of the season. It came down to, of course, the voting from the players themselves. And it came down to the top 10 in terms of points. And from there, it's, hey, who do you think is the best overall player? These were the final five and obviously plenty of representation, including this season's Comeback Player of the Year in Avatu. But Eki, who won this award last year, said, if I'm not mistaken, Playmaker's up there as well. But, of course, Nikki Dangles and Villapoika, uh, both of whom could win this, but at the same time, uh, they could also win playoff MVP with how the series has gone so far. Definitely. And I think Nikki Dangles... Uh... You know, his name being in here, you know, all the, obviously Villapoika, the top uh, score in the regular season, but Nikki Dangles with the with the level of play that he continues to develop on the defensive side and still, and especially now, still able to put up the offensive production that he does. I mean, he, he has to have, you know, a very, very strong pull in this category as well. Absolutely. So with that, the winner of the top forward awards. Sin, you got your stinger ready? I hope you Oh my god, no I don't. <laughs> Just <laughs> okay. The winner of top forward for this season, who else would it be? It was Villa Poika, the league's leading scorer. An absolute, uh, I think Rampage is the best way to describe his approach to the season. Sin, 47 goals in 30 regular season games. Yeah, just kind of ridiculous what he was able to do and we've seen some crazy goal scores before but Villapoico really kind of took the cake in that regular season and eight treads securing that one seat again a lot of thanks to him again you know 70 points in 30 games played you know that's a two uh 2.5 points per game if I'm mathing correctly quickly here in my head it's Absolutely ridiculous what he was able to do. I mean, tied or sorry, first in points, first in goals, tied for first in power play goals, tied for first in game winning goals, third place in total shots with 103. I mean, he was everywhere for this H Red squad. Absolutely. Now, as much as much sin as we, you know, kind of look at those awards as like, oh, that was obvious. In terms of voting, that was the most one sided landslide winner we had really? ever had in the voting over the past couple of years. So uh, an incredible season there for Villa Poica that, again, isn't over, and we could very well see him win playoff MVP. That said, let's move forward here. Nick, Brandon, you both did a phenomenal job. We'll be seeing you a little bit later on. But we're not done hearing from Nick. Let's throw it to kind of a recap of what the past few seasons have been before puck drop here in Game 4. Omnitrium perfectum. It's a timeless Latin phrase that quite literally means everything that comes in threes is perfect. In a movie franchise, it's the trilogy. It's capping off the story at the end. For wrestling fans, they'll know that third rubber match places an end point to break the tie between two combatants who have won a match each. But for this great sport, it's two teams that are once again set to clash in their third finals battle, striving to achieve that same perfection that the Romans once coveted so dearly. 
What is there to say about H. Reds and Falunda that hasn't been said before? The players by now are household names, their teams chiseled into the Mount Rushmore of greats that have taken the virtual ice. Their accolades speak for themselves. Yet still there is a shroud of mystery, an intrigue, seeing these two rivals face off as if you the fans at home are chanting for one more time, hoping to see something new astound your eyes. The flashy moves may not be top of mind, but they always find a way to fit a move or two into their quest for that cherished trophy. One team aims to be the first to win back-to-back -back titles. Hatred have done it! And the other looks to take down the defending champs and reclaim their seat on the throne. Philadelphia back on top of the mountain! But both know one thing is for certain. Four more wins separate them from repeated glory, etches their names into the history books, and caps off the season with pride and a bit of bragging rights. So let's finally order up this third series between these Goliaths, shall we? Because our rubber match, our trilogy, is this series. And this is the ECL Elite. Right, and there you have it. Again, we have talked about this to no end. We are down to the final two. H-Reds one win away from punching their ticket to yet another championship. They would, of course, be the first team to ever win back-to-back -back titles here, which is still just astonishing, the fact that they are, again, just one game away from that feat. We talked about it yesterday. We were able to join in uh, with this league at a time where it was very much dominated, not only by this Verlunda team, but, of course, Havu Gaming. And every single year, it was the joke. That is the final. And then H-Reds win it last year. It is their third straight trip to the finals as well. Let's not forget, two seasons ago, they were swept by Forlunda. Last year, they swept Forlunda, and now they're one game away from doing it again. And, you know, you sweep Forlunda in back-to-back -back finals, you certainly leave no doubt that you are at the top of the mountain. Yeah, uh, especially being the first one to get back-to-backs, which is kind of crazy to think about. And all that time that Ferlunda and Havu were duking it out in the finals, El Clasico, that neither one of those teams managed to win two straight finals. They kept, you know, exchanging them for a while there. We had the pleasure, I think, to cast three separate ones. And it's 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 crazy what Hreds is on the cusp of doing. But again, no celebration yet, no handing out the awards, no making history. They have to win that last game, and that's no easy task against Verlunda, who did come back from three games down against Havu, did lose game seven. They did come back from three to one games down and beat Havu in the finals. This is a Verlunda team who can come back. They are making some changes to their lineup as well. They're looking for a spark. Eki slots over to the middle, Patsloff onto that right wing side. Potsoff hasn't been that bad on the draws, but a very interesting change. Again, the center for Forlunda moves to the wing. Eki will take the middle. We'll see what happens in Sin. Maybe indeed we do see a return to that strategy of Eki posting up in front. We mentioned how effective it was at the start of the season before a yeah. patch for the game that ultimately changed the effectiveness of it just a little bit. Sin, it's game four. This might be the final game of what has been a phenomenal winter season. It is up to Forlunda. This is the last game that they are promised here in the ECL 22 winter season. You get a look there at this H-Reds lineup. Obviously, Sin, the sooner they get it done, the better. Yeah, and that's kind of want to be H-Red's mentality here. Obviously, they're feeling good, all smiles all the way around, feeling loose and, you know, obviously confident, as we always mention, but they have a task at hand. Yeah, the earlier you are able to secure this, the better. You start giving Falunda a little bit of momentum, all of a sudden you're staring down the barrel of a gun and the pressure switches to on you, and that's a scary place to be in facing Falunda. It is game number four, the ECL Elite Division Finals. Again, a three to nothing series lead for H-Reds. They will be going up on your screen, of course, in the white and red jerseys for Lunda in the home red. Excited to see how this one plays out, of course, as well. Always pay attention, the golden helmet wearers for each individual team. And, of course, surprise, surprise for the uh, likes of H-Reds. It is Nikki Dangles, who, again as was mentioned in the pregame, uh, just 
absolutely setting the world on fire in these uh, finals so far. Yeah, he's just been ridiculous. As good as Villapoica was in the regular season, that's been playmaker so far. There's an early chance here, perhaps for Forlunda. Pass into the middle, lose puck in the backhand tonight. Second chance. And boy, Sin, we've made a play on words about his name. <laughs> unfazed, certainly unfazed mm -hmm. there. Yeah, speaking of play on words, as soon as Pleamaker got the puck, I said his name, but I obviously meant to say Nicky Tangles and how well he's played so far. Pleamaker, though, still kind of searching to get off that schneid. He's been on several great chances. He's just not able to bury the puck. A great set of passes there. Nicky Dangles' shot goes wide to the blocker side. Again, Pleamaker, despite those struggles, still the team's leading scorer. There's H Reds in control. Again, a best of seven series. Plenty of wiggle room to make mistakes if they were to start off slow, but don't expect that to be the case as the puck goes around the back of the net. Wraparound bid doesn't find its intended target. Playmaker again. He'll dump this one in this time. Benito gives chase. Or not Benito, excuse me, Potsloff. We'll have to get used to that too throughout this matchup as a shot into the traffic. Great job by Benito to take that one away. And here he is again leading the Wii, leading the charge up ice. I was going to say, perhaps we were looking at a pass across, didn't elect to go that way, and instead, Hred's trying to get that offensive zone time that they're known for. Good stop there by Kappa. Another good set of passes. Pleamaker can't hold on to it. Loimu's there. A bit of a safety net. It is for Lunda back in possession for the moment. Neither team really able to establish that consistent offensive zone time through the first 10 minutes. Zeki along the half wall, one timer, good quick shot, but it was blocked. I like the four check Potsloff. coming out. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I like the four check coming out from Fralunda now. They seemed a bit hesitant at times to do that. I always think that's been one of their greater strengths, uh, especially throughout this season, was when they were able to four check consistently for some of the turnovers. This one again dumped in again. These two teams, at least today, the Winner walking away with 6,000 euros and of course as well punching their ticket to the new grand final format later on this year. Again, the change to the ECL now instead of it being, oh, ECL 12, ECL 13. It's a combined season throughout NHL 22. Our winter and spring season, of course our spring season starting up very soon. A reminder, signups are now live on sportsgamer.gg. And of course, we'll definitely be seeing these two teams involved. Although, Sin, if H-Reds win, theoretically, you might say, oh, well, why would they play in the spring season? If they win the championship in the spring season, there is no grand final. They ruin that idea, and they claim that extra 10,000 euro prize right out of the gates, and they will certainly have their sights set on that if they can get the job done here in this matchup. A turnover, Benito in possession. A couple of options. Perhaps waited a little bit too long to pass. Already under four minutes to play and an offside there with 3.39 to go. Nice attempt on the zone entry. You can see Fralunda throwing extra bodies here and there. The defenseman pinching in, always making sure someone is covering them, of course, but that's what you're going to have to do. Try to catch Atreds before they can set up that blue line trap, as we've uh, started to call it. It's the wall of red back there, and it's so hard to break when it's fully constructed. Game moves a rocket pass off the mark. FaZe will play it out to the wall. And Atred's doing a great job of good puck movement to get it out of danger. Benito, a step up there from King of Apes. Benito one more time down low. Nikki Dangles now goes back to the point. Domi back to King of Apes. One timer block down. Great job by Tamu to get in front of that one. Again, it's Benito off of a turnover. Can't make that pass. Giving Frolunda a little bit too much time to adapt to these situations. Final 30 seconds. Nikki Dangles pass broken up. Loimu Ferecki, five seconds perhaps. Pleamaker, a little bit of space. He'll throw one on, kick save. Puck loose in front and Villapoika will skate it out of danger. So with that, a very evenly contested first period as we'll get another look at one of the saves made by Faze. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a couple in tight chances, but hard to really pinpoint any sort of real A-grade opportunities for either team. Space and, you know, time and space a bit 
harder to come by. We did see some possession uh, for H Reds, but really not that dominant presence in the offensive zone that they could get once they start to get that ball rolling here. So if you're for Lunda, you have to be feeling pretty good about that. Despite not scoring, you know, they weren't really at a disadvantage throughout that. I like that chance at the end. Fortunately for H Reds, Domi able to pick that uh, rebound up and not allow the secondary opportunity because that would have been a tough goal for H Reds to allow at the very end of the first period. Again, the second period just about ready to begin here. As we always say, the first goal, a big, big difference maker, will certainly set the tone here. A must win game for the members of Fralunda, of course. We'll see what happens here in the second. It's going to be Atreds in control off the opening draw. Loy will be taken away again, though. And Sim, we've seen that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Nearly turned over on a breakout pass. Yeah, that, that was what led to a couple goals for Adrian. I was just, just going to point that out. They have to be careful when they try those passes, especially coming off of the L skating. The passes can have a little bit less power, and Adrian's are all ready to jump over those. One timer from the point, King of Apes. But that one just wide. A shot there on the short side. Babanito, a little bit of trouble as Cape. And a rare moment there. Got caught swimming a little bit. Puck. Taken out of a dangerous area. Eki's pass to Potslop. Doesn't go. Nito will send it over to the far side. King of Apes stepping up into the play. Tried to feed Nicky Dangles. That's broken up. Benito again. He has been all over the place. Pass in front. That shot doesn't go through. Still in a dangerous area. Nicky Dangles denied by the glove of Cape. Puck dumped into the far side by Playmaker in response. But so far, the dump and chase not working out. Great job there, though. On that step up to keep the puck alive. Playmaker going to try that short side. Defense all over it. What a job done there by Domi. Nikki Dangles. The pass in front broken up. Loimu again. A little bit of trouble trying to get that outlet pass. They do survive. Nikki Dangles is still getting back to his feet. There'll be an offside call here. Yeah, really keying in uh, on breaking up and getting in those lanes are eight dreads on the breakout. They know, you know, they can't forecheck super aggressive down low because Fralinda is good at the quick breakout, so they kind of have to do it as they back check, and that's what you're seeing right there. Getting in those lanes, presenting their sticks, and here we go. Lots left. Playmaker scores! <laughs> A little bit of good fortune for Fralinda. They find the opening goal here in game four. And just as it was yesterday, it kind of comes <laughs> off of, uh, you know, a bit of a, not a broken play, but a puck bounce there in the neutral zone. They get a two on one out of it, and that's exactly what they needed. Potsloff and Pleamaker capitalizing on it, getting the first goal here, and I believe that's the first time that Frilunda has gotten the opening goal in the series. It absolutely is not their first lead, but indeed... The first opening goal for them in this series. And again, just kind of a bouncing puck and a little bit of trouble here. Leemaker trying to make something happen again. A backhand shoveled on. We can find its way to the target there. So for Lunda, playing with the lead for just the second time in this series. They had a 2-1 to lead previously. King of Abe's pass intercepted. Great job here by Lunda. That's Tamu involved in the play. Potsloff. A little bit too late there. The outlet pass. Nikki Dangles nowhere to go for Lunda. And some strong hockey right now. Pots off the one-timer just wide. Another great look from the point. Just not able to find the back of the net as Benito will chase this one down in the corner. Around the back for Nikki Dangles. It's poked away. Still contested now below the goal line. Eki. The fine plea maker on the outlet. Doesn't have the speed. Get around, King of Apes. Domi. This pass off the mark. Let's see again what Playmaker can do. Both teams so strong in the neutral zone right now. We'll have to slow it down a little bit here. Quick movement to try and get those defenders moving along the blue line and open up space. But for Lunda right now, we talked about it the wall of red for H Reds. For Lunda, in a sense, just as capable and showing that off so far here, Sim. Yeah, and that's really good for them. It's seeming like H Reds, you know, a bit on the, not really on the ropes, but kind of feeling the heat a little bit. That was a strong start for Forlunda. Now they're able to lock it down, and we're seeing the ice tilt a bit in their favor. They're trying to enter the zone once again, unable to do it right there. There's space now for Benito. That pass in front again, not able to find its way through. 
See what Tamu can do here. Just three minutes to play here in the second period. In game number four of this best of seven series, H-Reds win one more game. They are the first ever back-to-back -back champions here in the Elite Division and certainly get our nod here as the top sixes team in the world. It's another offside call there for Forlunda, just 1-12 to go here in the second. And this game is really feeling like it's flown by so far, which if you're the team with the lead, that kind of feels good. But again, it's only a one-goal lead. H-Reds, we know, can score. They were getting some favorable bounces at times yesterday, but they also put themselves in the position to get those. As of right now, the adjustments are being made for Lunda once again on the counterattack. Playmaker, double teamed, and Villapoika is able to take that one away. One more rush perhaps here. Villapoika trying to chase it down. Nikki Dangles nearly got it to Villapoika, who's reaching behind him for the puck. And that will do it. 40 minutes in the books for Lunda. The 1-0 lead, 20 minutes away perhaps from getting their first win of this series. And maybe Sin, maybe just maybe, making today a little bit more interesting. It's If they do pick up the win here, it's the first step on a long, long journey uphill as your parents used to say you know the walking to school uphill both directions that's how it's going to feel uh these next possible four games for for Lunda if they're able to keep this momentum going but that's an excellent excellent start out of them their counter attacks were good defending at the blue line was strong their puck support was great a lot of short passes to open up some of the longer ones and we saw some even, even uh, some of the longer ones connecting to in that offensive zone it was after Potslop and plea maker retrieved i think a dump in chase he sent it all the way back to Eki coming in the zone as the late man who got that blistering one timer off that just went wide these are plays that weren't necessarily connecting for Falunda yesterday here they are today they find themselves in that precarious position of course down down three games to none, but they're in an advantageous spot in this game. And if they're able to carry over this play and continue to stifle Atreds as they have been doing, there is a chance, a glimmer of hope for them. Early chance here for Pops off. One timer, they score! Playmaker, who needs a power play with the delayed call for Alunda? Under 30 seconds into the third period, double up the lead. You can hear the crowd right there, of course. A few seconds on the delay due to uh, just, you know, the difference of uh, places that we are. But unreal shot coming out from Plemiker right there, picking up his second. The pass across, I really like that. The stop there. He didn't just drive the net. He recognized the collapse from the defender, stopped up in the high zone, and got that blistering shot off. FaZe did his best to get over, but it's 2-0 for Linda. What a play by Potsloff. A gigantic goal. For for Lunda here to add just a little bit of insurance. Didn't even get a chance to mention our fine sponsors at the top of the period. That would of course would be Wilhelm Kovan Lakritzi and ST Hockey as Playmaker nearly made it three. A close, close call there. H Reds playing with fire a little bit. Absolutely, and after being so snake bitten yesterday, especially here in the finals, to see you know some of these uh, for Lunda you know players get going, especially Playmaker. That can spell trouble for Atreds. On timer and a good kick save there by Cape right off the face off. Loose puck. Benito has it. Tries to feed it in front. Good defense on display once more here by Frolunda. Potsloff can't get that one. Faye is forced to kick save that one. And forced to cover. Big moment here, perhaps, for Frolunda. Yeah, kind of a little bit of something out of nothing. If Eki can win this face off here, they have a chance to sort of sustain some pressure, perhaps put some more on. They're in that aggressive set. Off the draw, face off one by Benito. Again, our key to this game, Eki moves from the wing over to center. Can't come up with a crucial face off win. There's Benito, poked away again at the last moment. We have a player down in the corner, finally getting back to his feet. Pass play off the mark and an extra poke check from Potsloff. Who knows what that could have been. And it's worth noting as well, again, one of the benefits we have uh, on this particular broadcast, getting to work with uh, Nick and Brandon here, uh, Mr. B Major pointing out the fact that H-Red's not exactly having the best record when giving up the first goal. And so far, I mean, hey, 12 minutes to go here in the third period. They've yet to get on the board. And it's because of great saves like that from Cape. We'll see what happens here. The numbers, perhaps, it's certainly on the scoreboard, but beyond the base numbers, 
lining up for Forlunde here more than they have at any other point in the mm -hmm. series. And I see a hungry Forlunde team. They are relentless on these puck carries. Bump after bump after bump. Great shot block there. Here's Potsloff. That pass a little bit off the mark. Opens up room down the other way. Benito bumped off. Great work there. Turnover and another great recovery by the defense. Came in a little bit of trouble. Oh man, play, playmaker with a little bit of speed here. He is a playmaker. Pass across. They score. Three to nothing. Potsloff. Eight minutes to go. And maybe, just maybe, this series isn't done yet. I think we're far from done right here. The way Frelunda has played in this first game. A beautiful counterattack. Playmaker creating the space with that self sauce, feeding it over to Potsloff, beating FaZe on that backdoor pass. And it starts from defense. You mentioned the recovery. It was Eki in that center position, playing down low, coming over to knock that puck off the stick of Nikki Dangles to create that transition. And a two on one developing here. Loimu has Playmaker with a slap shot, scores! Oh, and Nolan, eat your heart out. Four to nothing for Alunda here in the third period. If he could have called his shot, you know he would have. That's the hat trick goal for Playmaker. What a performance! What a statement from Fralunda here saying, We're not done yet. Buckle your seatbelts. We could be here all day day then i think if he could have pointed before that slap shot he would have yeah what a performance here villa poik of the shot and another kick save by cape what an effort here cape is forced to cover with 624 to go and sin we said never say never one game at a time for Forlunda, and barring a miracle game five's coming up yeah, uh, Miracle would be what it takes right here. Obviously, Atred's capable of that, but uh, for Linda, got to be flying high here. They just need to kill some time, keep defending well, keep getting that transition game going, and they've got themselves their first dub of the series. Here's Potsloff now. Shot off the side of the goal for Reki. A follow-up buffer shot that was banked off the back of the net. Nikki Dangles drops that one off for Benito. Atred's looking for their first goal of this contest as the double sweep, consecutive sweeps, about to slip away. Speaking of sweeps, a little job by Playmaker to get that back yeah. to the H-Red zone. Best game of the series for him by far, Villa Poika. Gonna work his way through, just two and a half minutes to play here in game number four. There's Playmaker down low for Eki. Tried to go back to Playmaker. Pass a little bit off the mark. Still time for Rage Reds to build a little bit of momentum heading into game five. Blocker stop there by Cape. Maybe got a little bit lucky with that one. Was drifting towards the far side. Great keep there by Domi. Loimu though able to find Potslop. Self sauce for speed into the corner. Solid protection work there. More than willing to watch that clock tick down. Just over 40 seconds remaining here in this game. Is Playmaker able to find it? See what he can do. Again, looking to maybe just hold. For as much as we talk about Villa Poika leading the way in terms of goal scoring, which just named forward of the season. Don't forget, plea maker. It's almost like he was Villa Poika before Villa Poika in terms of the goal scoring <laughs> capabilities that these two possess. It's unbelievable. Yeah, what do you have, like 60 goals in the season or something like that? He did, yes. Here is Eki. Wanted it short side. The diving effort to take it away. Pass in front, plea maker. Looks to circle back. Still has it, and that will do it. Wow. It's not done yet, everybody. For Lunda, the victory here in game number four. How about that playoff shutout for Cape? And yeah. Sin, one thing I noticed for Cape, despite being a Montreal Canadiens fan, the Boston, Rock Red, that Boston Red Sox or hat. Red Sox, thank you. Yeah. 2003, could it be calling? Oh my goodness, I mean, I, I, it's hard to determine. I think he wore that a bit for you, maybe a bit for the good mojo as well. Obviously, we all know goaltenders, a little bit of voodoo, a little bit of some weird guys, and I mean, perhaps no one more important to this team than Cape. He is, you know, very much sort of a spiritual leader for them. You think back to a couple seasons ago, he was uh, live in their chat doing player announcements as if it was a real game. You need guys like that on your roster who provide those kind of, you know, like, just the kind of a... Uh, 
the mental sort of boosts that you need. And Kape is definitely a guy right there. And I mean, that game itself has got to be a huge mental boost for Fralinda. A 4 nothing, really dominant performance after that first period for them. They just kept going, did not let their foot off the gas. And that's a huge, huge, huge win for Fralinda. And again, as we said it, one step back on the road to recovery. You never know what can happen. Ruthless efficiency, I think, is the best way to sum that one up. Four goals on ten shots. About half the time on attack. And, Sin, that's one of the things we talk about in a competitive sense, whether it be sixes or the 1v1 side of things. You can have all the time and attack in the world that you want. You can have all the shots in the world that you want. Did mm -hmm. you score? At the end yeah. of the day, Fulana got those goals. Yeah, and it was mostly from their counterattacks, and it started with good defense. So what I liked about that and what kind of fed it so much is when Atreds tried to get to the middle, there wasn't a ton of space. In the previous, you know, yesterday in the previous games, they were able to gain the middle of the ice with a bit too much efficiency here. And I mean, we saw Eki a couple times playing phenomenally down there. I mean, breaking up a couple plays, obviously Tamu and Loimu, just absolutely fantastic. And once, once it got to the points, you have Potsloff and Pleamaker, who obviously Pleamaker is very capable defensively, but you put a guy like Potsloff with the center experience now playing wing, he could be a lot more aggressive on those defensemen. And we really kind of saw that playing a big role in creating some of those transition chances. So you don't need the time and attack if you're getting those two on ones like Fralunda was. And that's where a lot of that offense came from. Phenomenal performance. Obviously, their best of the series. They get a win on the board. There will be no sweep in the finals this time out. Game number five coming up in just a matter of moments. We'll set the stage for you and also tell you who our defenseman of the season happens to be. After a quick word from our sponsors, we will be right back. A lot more action to come. Don't go anywhere. Minkä päällä lakukastiken maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää, ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Tää sopis lenkki kuin valettu. No niin, olkapa hyvä. Wilhelm Valu sopii kuin valettu mihin vaan. All right, everybody, we are back again, all four of us, one big happy family here at Sports Gamer. Again, Wilhelm, Kovalon, Lockerty, and SD Hockey, very much a part of that. Gentlemen, you got to just sit back and watch the action. I'll throw it to you first, Nick. Your thoughts on what was a stunning game four? Yeah, we watched a, a clinic, a show for a bit there between Playmaker and Potsloff, and I guess the magic there is... Eki going back to a position he is pretty natural at, clearly on the ice. But uh, for me, looking at that game, it just felt like, I don't know, it, maybe H-Reds. I don't know if it's confidence. I don't know if it's you're down, but you're not out for Frolunda. But uh, H-Reds pressing a little bit earlier than I would have expected them to in that period three. And that kind of opened up those just odd man rushes back to back to back to back to back. And uh, I, I think you have to trust that you're going to lose one here and there and lose a goal and you can come back from that. It, it just felt like a different H Reds, but maybe it was a different for a London team out there. I'd say so. Brandon as well. You're one of the most studious people that uh, I've ever worked with here. Your take on game number four. Thank you there, Tugi. Appreciate that. But I, I think the big thing for, for Lunda is that for the first time in probably the two seasons that we've seen these two match up, that looked like the Fralunda that we have seen with so much success for years now, where they were really able to get things flowing through the forwards with all five guys. I mean, we saw it's plea maker in on every single play, whether he was scoring the goal, making that initial pass. He had zero goals through the first three games of this finals, and it just felt like whatever Fralunda was doing, it would work for them through that game four. And it's the first time that versus H-Reds, not just this finals, but last finals as well, that we have been able to see them really execute their normal gameplay and really be the aggressors and not have necessarily be on their heels as much in a series. So... They have a long way to go. I think Sin said it best. It's the first step in a long journey to making this comeback, but that is the type of momentum that they need. And I think that there is a lot of positive momentum knowing that they were finally able to break past that wall, both figuratively and literally, of H-Reds. 
Well, we mentioned uh, numerous times now throughout this cast that wall of defense for H-Reds kind of transitions us perfectly to our penultimate award here that we have for this end of season recap. We just gave away top four that went to Villapoika of H-Reds. And now we talk about the final five in the running for top Defender, no surprise to anybody. King of Apes and Domi both there representing H Reds, and of course Loimu for Forlunda, who was just off the back of a phenomenal uh, game four for him. Also up there, Mr. Nipsley and Sebi mm -hmm. Larson of Feriestad Sin, who surprised a lot of people this season. A lot of changes with FBK, and especially Nipsley coming in at the last moment for him to be voted as one of the top five defenders this season. That's a huge, uh, huge accomplishment. Oh, yeah, I was just going to bring him up. The there's uh, with as you mentioned, so many question marks going into the season for Fediastad and Mr. Nipsley and Sebi Larson turned out to be one of the top kind of shutdown pairings uh, in the ECL elite. Yeah, they got that four seed. Yeah, they got you know eliminated in that second round uh, to for Linda. But you, we remember how close that series was. You know, so many just. So such low scoring games in a series where you expect, you know, Fettistad and Ferlunda going back and forth that, you know, has the possibility to be high scoring. It was Mr. Nipsley and Sebi Larson, especially just shutting the door again and again and again. And Fettistad, unfortunately, couldn't get the offense against Ferlunda. So eventually it broke down. But yeah, Mr. Nipsley and Sebi Larson, absolutely flawless on the blue line for FBK this year. Now, Sin, I think our winner here kind of brings us perfectly to our topic of conversation as we get ready for Game 5. The winner of the Defender of the Season here for our winter season in ECL 22 is Domi. And this was another award that was pretty much a landslide. And it's interesting because we might be fresh off the pack of the one game where that H-Red's defense has looked a little bit human. Yeah, and for... For this entire season and of course last uh, season's championship they did not look human and someone who I think really uh, was kind of the catalyst for that is Domi we talked about it all throughout the course of the season he just kept picking off pucks left and right and he seemed to have such a good anticipation and knowledge of where they would go how he needed to position himself with his hand and is to be able to pick these off again and again and again not to mention he also adds some uh, you know, some offense to it. But when you think about perhaps the more offensive person on this uh, between him and King of Apes, you would say King of Apes. And that's why I really appreciate Domi winning in the fashion he did because he has such a, a, a huge defensive presence. And, you know, as a top defender award for it to not be, you know, solely based on points is very, you know, very appreciative, especially if you're a guy who plays like Domi. So a big congratulations to Domi there again, defender of the year. Guys, we are just about ready for game five. And a sentence or less, Nick, Brandon, who's winning game five? Yeah, that's a good question. I I, I don't know if I want to put a prediction out there right now, Tugi, but I'll tell you, I got to feel good for Cape, uh having a really good defensive core in front of him. They've looked the best that they had so far this season, maybe the best they've had through the playoffs. This was a win he needed. This might start turning the tide for Ferlanda if they keep this up. Brandon yeah, this as well. Is, this I got to do it. I got to put you on the hot seat. Say it. Who's it going to be? Stun silence from Mr. B Major. Refuses. <laughs> refuses. Sin. I had to do it to him. I've put you on the hot seat plenty of times with these predictions. They're smart, though. They're crafty veterans at this stage. They're not going to put themselves on the line like that. You can put yourself on the line, though. Signups are live. Sportsgamer.gg. You want to be right here next season? Well, hey, there's only 16 elite spots. But in the future, you could find yourselves here again. Whether or not you've been a part of the ECL, make sure to sign up. Or if you want to get involved again, it is not too late again. Sportsgamer.gg. And hey, who's to say what might be in the future this season? Instead of, you know, just the ECL, maybe there's a return of another league coming. Who's to say? Keep an eye out. Sportsgamer.gg for all the information that you need. Sin, I won't do the same thing to you uh, that I just did to them, but man, how do you view this fifth game going? Because momentum is mm -hmm. so important in a series like this, especially when we know the conclusion of this series is today. Yesterday, the first three games, who knows what might happen tomorrow. Now here we are for Lund to get that big win in game number four. What do you think we're going to see here? Uh, H-Reds really need a big response here and getting in early. They might just have that an early chance right there. Villapoika taking a shot and they may not be done. This is exactly the kind of start they need. 
H-Reds, of course, in the home red unis, looking to clinch back-to-back -back titles. That big shot from King of Apes blocked down. Dealt it a couple of times in game four. Nikki Dangles trying the short side. Good save. Bonito almost found his way to the far side post to Villapoyca. Trouble here still. H-Reds, Bonito the backhand denied. Cape having to come up big here in the opening moments of game number five. Again, the best of seven series here in the finals. Now the turnover, Domi shot blocker save. Cape standing on his head. What a block there by Playmaker. And finally some reprieve for that defense. What a first five minutes for H-Reds. It's exactly what they needed. I was going to say, this is not obviously not a must win for them by any means, but this is pivotal. You do not want to give Forlunda another, you know, another boost of confidence. You want to end that right now. You want to shut them down right now because if you continue to allow them to gain that confidence, oh boy, you're in for trouble. Here's Tamu stepping up. About to call out the wall of defense for H-Reds. All five men back and found a little bit of space. Here's Domi right back down low and a quick pass back. We'll go all the way down and H-Reds will be forced to reset, but it has been all them for the first eight minutes or so of this first period again game number five is plea maker pass across Potsloff shovels one on and a big stop there by phase first chance for Forlunda and his high danger of an opportunity as they come yeah and a really good job of cutting off the angle a little bit further out of his crease right there to make sure that there's no short side opportunity unfortunately this will be offside but you can see Forlunda kind of taking what's given to him. They're trying to dump and chase a lot more. When they see a clean zone entry, they're doing that, but their strength right now is their counter attack. They understand that h -Reds are too good of a puck possession team. They will get their time, so you just have to try to limit their chances, keep them to the perimeter, counter attack when you can. Chance there, another opportunity. Eki hit the side of the goal. It was a wraparound bid that ended up generating two other opportunities. Nikki dangles over the line, hands it off for Domi. His shot blocked down by Pleamaker. H Reds still in control. Toe drag shot. A little bit of shock and awe attempt there. Doesn't quite go through. The real shock would be if we ever saw somebody use that ability. <laughs> yeah. This Tamu in control here. Pops back for Reki. Again, a quick give and go. Sends it around. Pleamaker, nowhere to go. Great job by he and Potsloff to. Win that back. And again, that's that's what I was intrigued in seeing, Sin. Like, Potsloff now being on the wing, working with Playmaker, how aggressive would he be? Yeah, and that's kind of an interesting thing to, to sort of look at. I'm sure they've tried, you know, swapping uh, positions and stuff in scrims. Obviously, we haven't got a good look at it, but he doesn't look out of place at all on the wing. In fact, he's looking pretty comfortable there and, you know, kind of looking like a, a bird, you know, really able to take flight and spread its wings. Look at him go back in the zone again. Playmaker still hanging around, not able to find that one. Domi works it for Nikki Dangles. Benito picks up the loose puck, shot on from an odd angle. Playmaker, what a great stretch pass for Potsloff. Still able to hold on to it. What a shot from Eki, and what a save by FaZe. What a chance that was. I don't think anybody expected Eki to be the one to find the puck. As a deflection and a save off the attempt by Playmaker. Great looks here. For Frolunda on the rare opportunities that they've been getting here. It's going to get a live look in. That bottom left-hand side of your screen as we hit the final minute of play here in the first period. Still looking for the opening goal. Nikki Dangles sends it down low. Tamu for Playmaker. Maybe one more chance here for Frolunda. That pass across doesn't go. Two seconds. Villa Poika takes the hit. Benito runs out of time. We make it through the opening 20 minutes without a goal, and it's because of saves like this from Cape, although Sin Fez made some great stops as well. Yeah, just going to bring that up. Kind of a bit of a goaltender's duel in the in the first going. I mean, there were some uh, some big chances coming out early for H-Reds as they got that first initial pressure, and then you saw Forlunda with the put pushback, both on the counterattack and the quick plays from down low there. And, I mean, FaZe had to come up big, and that last one especially, Eki just... Unfortunately, couldn't bury that, and I got to I got to shout it out. The the chemistry from Potsloff and Eki, especially as they've changed positions, is just incredible. I know we know in the past, I'm not sure now, but they have been roommates, so you got to assume they're you know obviously playing together quite a bit there, and I, it's really showing. Some of the passes that they're connecting on 
are just brilliant and unfortunately hasn't resulted in a goal just yet. But if they can keep up what they're doing at the end of that period here, they definitely have a chance to get the opening marker in this game. And that would be a huge boon for them, of course, again, to go up first. In ECL Elite Division Championship Round, brought to you by our friends at Wilhelm, Kovalon Lockerzi, and ST Hockey. Waiting to see who will strike first here. For Lunda, they were down three to nothing in this series. One game at a time, the approach worked out in game four. But they still have their backs against the wall here as Playmaker takes a huge hit in the corner. Puck turned over. Villapoika for Benito. Tried to go back to it. Botslot. Great defensive skating there to hold the puck, but Eki has nowhere to go. Chance there as you get a look at some of the people watching in on this. And of course, I know everybody involved in this broadcast is a little bit jealous to uh, be missing out on that live atmosphere, but the world be what the world is right now, and there's only so much we can do. Absolutely. I mean, we still get the privilege of watching these two teams duke it out for the third and final time, the, uh, the ending of the trilogy, as it were. That shot doesn't quite go. We're five minutes gone here in the second period now. Again, h -Rets. They so often do. Working it around the neutral zone, they do find space. That puck sent over to the open corner. Tamu's able to walk away with it. Now here's Zeki. All three forwards up four for Lunda. Potsloff couldn't get that shot off. What a poke check there by King of Apes. Playmaker sends it around. Tamu Eki all the way back. Now it's Loimu at the point. That shot blocked by his own man. Benito trying to generate some speed. Great recovery by Tamu. Playmaker as well, trying to find a bit of space. King of Apes all over him there. Oak check. Atred's able to keep it alive. Nikki dangles. What a sauce into the slot, but Loimu was able to pick that one off. And Sin can't help but feel as though just the atmosphere here, I mean, we talked about the atmosphere there. For, for us sitting here watching this, it's one of those things where we're just, we know what any possible moment, that first goal can just show up and it's it's almost like expecting like, okay, where's that moment of brilliance gonna come from? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's just, could, it's nerve wracking. I mean, we're not even the ones playing. That's the only one I can think of saying it. It's nerve wracking. You're kind of feeling for both of these teams right here and whatever's gonna happen will happen, but it's it's incredible. Like just, just, the feeling of this and how important you know it is for both of these times and, and the kind of implications of these games, especially with Ferlunda being down and the potential of them to come up. So much pressure. Potsloff still chipping away for that one in the corner. It is Domi able to take it away. Let's see what they can do on this break and it is Benito over the line. Duck on the back end, will rifle one around. Domi able to keep that one in at the point. Down for Nikki Dangles, poked loose, still has it though. And one off the pads of Kape. And a face-off coming up in the attacking zone for Atreds. Big opportunity for Atreds here. Again, the first goal in this game will be oh so important, especially uh, the further the clock ticks down. We're here getting to the late stages of the second. A loose puck again, Benito. Villapoika and right back to him. Domi over for King of Apes. D2D one-timers deflected just wide by Nikki Dangles. Another pass in front into the traffic. Atred sticking with that strategy. There's a reason why you see teams continue those forces. Trouble here. Goes out to the corner. Probably the best spot for it to go for for Lunda. Here's Playmaker. Picks that one up in stride. Poked away by Apes. Eki. Not able to hold on to it either. And now it's Domi leading the charge for Atreds. Battling with Playmaker. It goes back to the neutral zone. And again, a poke check back. But. We have our first penalty of the game. Atreds going to the power play. It will be Loimu called and an interesting call. Yeah, I almost thought someone got the stick out, but it's an interference and I guess we'll call that one borderline right there. Nonetheless, Ferlunda will have to kill this off. Huge, huge moment here. Both teams, prolific power plays and penalty kills. The regular season and playoffs. Short side rebound. It's no, it's in clean. Villa Poika 
finds the breakthrough. One to nothing, A-Treads off the power play goal. Just like that, they get that opening goal, and that's, again, making their opponent pay for their mistakes. They did that yesterday, too, with a power play goal, and it looked like a pass that may have hit off the pad of the goaltender and enter, perhaps a skate out front. Nonetheless, a bounce rewarding uh, A-Treads once again and going against Frölunda, and they will have to come back in this game. Hopefully we get another look at that one in the intermission. I'd love to know how that happened to beat Cape. Regardless, it is a one to nothing lead now in favor of Atreds. They might not be done. Benito the shot save by Cape. And remember that one, they could have doubled up that lead as soon as they got it, essentially. Yeah, that was a very, very close right there. Kind of using the pass across as bait to open up some space to crash the net for himself. And it was a huge pad stop coming out from Cape. Good win in the defensive zone by Eki. Gives him his team a chance to break out and get something started. Two minutes to play here. Needless to say, a late goal for either side. Certainly alter the outlook for this third period. Pleamaker is able to handle that pass. Now it's Eki. Back for Pleamaker, but nowhere to go. He had too much speed. And now it's Nicky Dangles. Hands off for Benito. Poke check. Can't get that pass down low. And a penalty called again. And it's going to be a slash. A treads back to the power play. It's Tamu this time going to the box. That's a rough one again. Good position to try the stick lift, but unfortunately for him, just gets the stick up at the hands and takes that penalty. A little bit of time left here. They're going to go with that aggressive set as well. Huge moment here, 8.9 on the clock. Face off one by Eki, Potsloff can't clear. Playmaker has it. A treads, a one to nothing lead, almost two. Cape makes the save at the end. Sin, the defending champions, 20 minutes away perhaps from closing out this series. Yeah, what a position for them after kind of uh, getting trounced in that first game and for them to respond in the manner that they have right now, locking things down defensively, that's so important. Getting that first goal also so important because as you know, our, our buddy Nick mentioned during that intermission uh, between these two games that they started to kind of press maybe a bit earlier than they did. So yes, they're confident, but always on this stage, there has to be some level of nerves. Perhaps they got the best of them. They extended themselves and they got punished on the counter attack. And in this one, they're not allowing that to happen quite yet. And yeah, it was exactly off of the goaltender's pads. That's unfortunate for them. I mean, what else can you say? Just a pass across, not a whole lot you can do as a goaltender right there. Can't really, no button to squeeze your pads, you know, closed. And it's just what happens, happens. And Unfortunately, if you're for Linda, you've had a couple of those instances throughout this series here. And and at this stage, that, that one hurts even more. But you still have a job to do. 20 more minutes, kill this one off, and, you know, try, try to just get back into this game one step at a time. For Linda, need to earn their way into more game time than what they have here, this final period of play, and a good clearance there to start off this PK. Beginning of the third period. Let's see how this plays out. Great movement. King of Apes for Domi. Pass. Shot big. Save again by Cape. Denying Villapoika, who did score the go-ahead goal. In the latter stages of that second period. Potsloff has it now, and he again will dump it out to play it safe. See what happens here now. King of Apes over the line. We are back to five on five, and he elects to cut back and four for Lunda. How much do you risk kind of coming out of that defensive shell to force the issue? Four goals in that prior game. Nothing yet in this one, and this puck's going to go all the way back down to the H Reds defensive zone. Tested over the line, and it's Loima who's able to come up with it. A force to plea maker doesn't go. H Red certainly finding their groove defensively here in this fifth game. A turnover here, though, and let's see what Potsloff can do. And unfortunately, Sin, it's offside. Yeah, it didn't quite have that passing lane. Pleamaker wanted to enter the zone with speed there on that far side. Just a little bit off on their timing, unfortunately. But. Again, still some time left, but they need some possession here. h -Red's doing a good job of dictating the pace, as they so often do. And look at that blue line presence, and they get the turnover. Potsloff now goes back to the point. Eki shot save, rebound, and hammered off of the pads by Potsloff, or by Playmaker, excuse me. 
Again, one of those things, that position change, certainly catching up to us. Guard here today, a penalty called for the third time. A little bit too aggressive, Atreds will have one more chance on the man advantage to perhaps put this game, and as a result, this series to bed. It will be a penalty called and a trip on Loimo Sin, his second penalty of the game. Yeah, and that's, you know, just too, too, a little bit too careless with the stick. You kind of figure that those players love to do that L skating on the boards while entering the zone for just that reason to prevent kind of, as you call it, the poke spam, so to speak. So you have to kind of hold that skill stick position and move it away, and it's just unfortunate for them. Failure to clear. Domi for Apes. D to D. One timer blocked down. Playmaker has it and clears. Certainly not a winning strategy right now, having to kill off what is your third penalty of the game. It is Domi. Could a goal here be the last one that they need? Pass in front. A save again by Kape. He has been phenomenal. Failure to clear. Here's Domi. Goes down low for Villapoyca, and a pass off the mark will pretty much kill off the last of this power play. They'll get a chance to rush up the ice and gain the zone. Is Villapoyca controlling it now? See what he can do. Still has it. Nicky dangles to the point just wide of the post. Cape. Tracking was off on that one a little bit. There was space. That pass back to the neutral zone, but that clock is winding down. Eight and a half minutes to play, perhaps, in this series. Yeah, just not enough time right now, and you're seeing Forlunda struggle so much to be able to get possession. If they have it here, though, they... At the point, shot in front off the pads. Faze keeps it out. Villapoyka not able to work his way around. Tamu turned over again. Time to hit the panic button if you're for Lunda. We need to see everything that you got offensively. Eki trying to keep it alive, but it finds its way to Nikki Dangles. Villapoyka for King of Apes, right back down the boards, picked off by Tamu, running into his own man. It was Eki. He hands it off for Potsloff. Tamu again at the point. Shot scores! Eki in front on the deflection. This game, this series, it's not over yet. That is absolutely massive. A throwback to the beginning of the series when Eki was deflecting things in left and right. What a beautiful player right there. On the ice, the shot was an Eki stick just deflecting it over the blocker and the shoulder of FaZe right there. We are not done yet. Fralunda has tied the game. Incredible work there. Right when they needed it, they go back to the strategy that paid off so consistently at the start of this season. Eki in front of goal. He gets the deflection that ties this game at one apiece. Four minutes to play now here in this third period. Let's see how H-Reds respond. Shot rebound nearly swept home by Nikki Dangles. Close call from Perlunda there. Yeah, they're putting the fear of the rebounds on them again. I mean, we saw how many of those types of goals went in in yesterday's broadcast, and they keep going back to that well, and why not? Why wouldn't you keep throwing pucks and bodies at the net? Absolutely, as much as those force passes can pay off. Shots on, can do the same thing. Villapoyca just wide on the far side. Down low, Villapoyca again for Nicky Dangles. I think it was blocked by his own man. Well, Villapoyca was trying to like, intentionally dive out of the way of that one or not, but here's Playmaker down low for Potslot. A lot of trouble to deal with. Loose puck, Nikki Dangles has it. Final minute and a half here in regulation. Great defense by Tamu. He'll carry it in. Tamu tried to send it into the open space. Potslot shot blocked down and a big kick out by Benito. Might have gone off some, uh, someone's stick there as well or it's all you know, the maybe practice, it's one of those man. unexplainable bounces. We all know these guys play a lot of FIFA, too. So, you know, just some of those skill sets uh, bleeding into NHL. Puck down low, a foot race for it. Benito for Domi, King of Apes back for Domi. Pass across, nobody home. A goal here would most certainly end it one way or another. Big save by Kape again. Saw that one through the traffic. Here's Eki, nowhere to go after the step up poke check by Domi. Now it's Benito. Lotzloff trying to hold it. He'll get it back here. Pass for Playmaker doesn't go. Final eight seconds of regulation is their time. 
Domi in front, scramble for the puck. Oh! Oh! With one second to go! Benito, the captain, is the hero! H-Reds, back to the top of the mountain, your first back-to-back -back champions in elite division history, and what a way to do it! I am speechless right now, jaw on the floor. You can see the boys celebrating right there, and why not? They did not give up. There was eight seconds, seven seconds left as they gained that line. The puck went into the corner. They stayed hungry on it, trying to just get it towards the net. They threw it towards the net multiple times. Initial save from Cafe, and it found its way onto Benito Stick, who ices the game. Back-to-back -back champs, Atreds. They will be hoisting that hardware. Congrats to them. Speechless in at this point. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. The puck right at the end. Cape went all out. But Benito is the hero. Atreds retain their title. Five games over for Lunda in this best of seven series. Then 6,000 euros richer, securing their spot in the grand final later on this year to cap off NHL 22's calendar year. An unbelievable goal, right when it looked like Frolunda was there. You literally, I mean, you could barely score any later than that. Heartbreak for Frolunda. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is absolutely heartbreaking. It, they, they they fought tooth and nail to try to get back to that, that deflection goal, and you really felt them with the way they're pressing at times that they could find that go-ahead goal or at least get that overtime. But you see there from the stats, Atreds, the pushback that they had in this game was real. I mean, the time and attack that they got, and they were able to find ways to capitalize on it as well. And that was kind of the difference, obviously, being going into the day three games to none is obviously a big advantage. I, it's, but it was there. It was still there for Forlunda. They got so close, and we could see the stunned look, especially on Nick's face. We are all stunned. I think uh, all of us simultaneously, as that goal went in, jaws dropped to the desks, and yeah, wow, just wow, Nick. <laughs> Yeah, I wish we words. could have. Uh, uh, I know we showed the the recap of the player celebration when that happened, and we stayed there through the rest of the game. But I wish we could have recorded our four box off camera. Everybody just lost it out of their seats when H Red's Benito, the Capitan, makes it happen and just puts the goal in. One second left. I mean, like you said, you can't get it much closer to the end of the game. I think we were all preparing our game sheets to go to overtime and go, all right, who's our overtime winner here? But no, H Red slams the door with a second left and goes back to back. Wow. It's, it's a heartbreaker. Brandon, I'll throw it to you, but for Cape, I mean, it was pointed out in the chat, you know, in our little group chat here a few moments before the, the you know, the winning goal. Cape was making phenomenal saves all game. You can't fault him for that one, but just heartbreaking no. to have that much of an effort and still just have, you know, not have it be enough. Yeah, you, you just feel for Cape in that one. And if you think we are surprised, you can only imagine how Ferlunda feels. So close to being able to climb back. They were down late in this game. Eki gets the huge goal on that deflection. And with the way they were playing, like you said, Sin, they were starting to get that pushback. They were starting to really fight back in this game. And you get a feeling that if Ferlunda is able to make this 3-2, to two, they're in a favorable position to maybe pull this thing off. But... Who else but the H-Reds captain himself and Benito to come up huge with that rebound play, a play that we saw H-Reds execute multiple times yesterday. It came in true for them once again. And what what better way could you imagine to end the season, to end the series, to end this playoff run with a play like that to finish it off? Just absolutely amazing. Wow. It's in a phenomenal season for Fralunda. But they fall short just again. You know, it's unthinkable that yeah. just a few short seasons ago, when we've mentioned it so many times, but oh, it's for Lunda or Havu every single year, and just how H Reds have been able to work their way. Not only, you know, we saw them go from contention to 
making a final, getting swept, and then they bounce back, and oh, what will happen this time? And now these past two seasons and what's happened, like the yeah. the the journey that we've had, the story that we've been able to follow over the last couple of seasons. And it's I want to kind of I want to kind of flash us back to a couple seasons ago that you're referring to when they began to become a contending team, and you felt something was special about them because late in a game on the penalty kill against YMCA Esports, they scored the game winning goal. They attacked with like 30 seconds left on the penalty kill. And we were like, who does this? Like, who does this? Who are these H-Reds guy? Who do they think they are? Well, they are back-to-back ECL Elite champions. And it comes from aggressiveness like that. It comes from decision-making like that. And having the cojones to get aggressive and, and have, you know, be able to finish a game off. That's what they did there at the end. They weren't sitting back. They weren't playing for overtime. They pushed, they pushed, they pushed. And they got that game winner with one second remaining. And as well, the missing pieces that they had and the pieces, like we always talk about that too. And it's one of my favorite times of the year, obviously the off season, you see the transfers and there have been uh, crazy moves made over the past few seasons, but especially too, in looking at H reds over the past few years, I mean, you bring in Villa Poica. After season 11, he spent that time with Vesa Pampa. 38 points in 30 games? That's not bad. What will he do with H-Reds? He had 80 points last year. And uh, again, one forward of the year this year uh, with 70 points and 47 goals in a full season. Like the, you know, and, and it's one of those things that within the community, you know, from a, a broadcaster's perspective and what we are able to present here in such a limited time when there's so many coveted spots for this airtime, just that idea of what we're able to present. And it's like, okay, this guy for Vesta Pompa, not bad, but will we be able to take the step up? And obviously someone like Benito and the guys on H reds know that, oh yeah, he's going to be able to take a step up or the idea of bringing in, uh, Nikki dangles and what he's done and his constant evolution, the idea of bringing in Domi, as well, when there was, uh, you know, some some intrigue around his departure with Yippie Voskula. You've mentioned before with King of Apes. Hey, this guy goes from a depth role to being the guy. And yeah. my God, what a decision that was. And then FaZe as well has that elite rookie season with Vesa Pampa. Okay, you're going to a contender now. Can you do it? That's back-to-back championships and numerous shutouts in the finals against Verlunda. This team is just so perfectly crafted. Uh, how do we knock them off of how do you knock them off of this mountain seriously I, I don't know <laughs> we, they, we they have to be tested against the world now that's really the only thing when you go back to back in Europe with the teams that we have here and in convincing fashion both times a sweep and winning in five it, this is the top team in Europe and until someone's able to knock them off and I'm sure we'll hear in chat until they break up or something but it's hard to imagine, you know, them them being knocked off this mountain right now with how just what a well-oiled machine they are. Absolutely. Now, we are just about ready for the uh, championship celebration here for H-Reds. Not sure if we are entirely ready to go to that or not. You look at the boys there. Champions once more. And, I mean, if we are good to go, waiting to hear from our producers as to whether or not they can hear us and everything is perfectly set up. But, again, we will get word uh, with the champions here and the trophy celebration in just a few moments. And again, we'll give that a few more moments, but stick with us for that. Um, right. Although we might uh, potentially be good to go now. We'll, we'll see. We'll wait it out. The celebration, Sin, elbows all yeah. around. <laughs> elbows all around, throwing them bows. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, boys, here we go. The celebration we've been waiting for. Captain Benito who raised the trophy. It's a, it's a beautiful sight, gentlemen. I mean, the happiness, you could just see it in them. The ex- <laughs> King of Apes, don't know what that was, but we'll just ca- we'll call that his yeah. own style right there quite hey, honestly. when you have that height and it might not be the biggest room there there's not much to do i guess with the limited space 
Absolutely. Just having to duck down a little bit. But I mean, congrats to them. They played incredible. Of course, they they wish their goaltender phase could be there. And being in Sweden and all a little bit hard to make that trip all the way over as they're giving you a nice look at that beautiful ECL Elite Champions trophy there. The leading goal scorer, Villa Poika, entering your frame. Uh, King of Apes being completely out of your frame because he is a very tall man. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. They, uh, uh, the giant, perhaps, of this particular elite division as we get ready again uh, to be able to conduct and hear from them. B Major will be taking the lead on that one because, I mean, hey, you put the best person for the job in that particular spot, needless to say. Although, yeah, they, got, uh, they got that rapport already established, you know? They, they got right. the interview That's earlier right. and then... <laughs> Oh, goodness. So again, we will uh, wait to hear from them. But again, a reminder in case you missed it. Well, you missed out. But Atred's back to back champions here in the elite division. Phenomenal stuff for this team. It's in the team picture there. Again, as you mentioned, it's a shame FaZe isn't there. But Benito, the captain, scoring the series clinching goal with one second to go in game number five. And it looks like we're going to be just about ready to go. So, Brandon, when he's ready, We'll have you take it away. Hello, hello. <laughs> Sounds great here as we'll uh, get a word with the man holding the trophy in King of Apes. This is uh, going to be a lot of fun to get to talk to him. Uh, are you able to hear me over there? Yeah, yeah. All right, man. First of all, congratulations. I can see the joy on all of you guys' faces. And I have to ask, I have to start out, when Benito was able to, to put in that game-winning goal. What was the feeling for you guys? Absolutely unreal here, over here. Can't imagine how you guys felt there. Mm, I went like to, uh, to zero to 100, like one second. It was it was very, very, <laughs> very nice feeling that. Then, then we just uh, knew we won the game. There was uh, there was so uh, less time left the game. So yeah, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's hard to uh, describe the feeling at the moment, but yeah, as, a, as you can see, I'm kind of happy now. <laughs> hey man, absolutely. You always got a smile on your face when I see you, but I bet you're smiling even wider right now. And obviously with this championship, you are now the first team to ever repeat as winners in the European Championship League. How special is it for you guys to do that, knowing where you guys have come from, that rise that you've had to do it against a team like Forlunda? How does it feel to be able to be the first back-to-back -back champions here in the ECL? Mm, well, as you can imagine, it feels very good. <laughs> I don't, it's, it's hard to say uh, anything else about that, but yeah, of course, it's, it's a special, and uh, I know I, I play in special team. Uh, all right, it's just a, just a great team, and we uh, really like each other as well. So it's kind of fun to win trophies with these guys. Absolutely, man. It never gets old watching guys be able to win this, and the smiles on the faces and the relationships and the pure joy that I can see. And finally, without a there is no playoff run without a playoff MVP. I, I know you guys probably, you know, thinking about other things, thinking about the win, but uh, is there a playoff MVP that we have in mind here for H Reds? Mm, or a uh, uh, playoff MVP. Uh, uh, I think it's Vilupoika. It must be Vilupoika. Come here, come here, MVP, best player with the, with the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you love to see that, man. Uh, congratulations to Villa Puica. He already won one award today, won the Best Forward Award earlier in the broadcast. Not sure if he was aware of that, but adds another trophy to the case. And King of Apes, thank you so much for getting to talk to us, man. Congratulations to you guys. Well-deserved. The first back-to-back -back champions in the ECL Winter 22 champions. Age Reds, King of Apes, congratulations. Congratulations to all you guys. Yeah. Uh, this is now uh, Benito's turn. <laughs> okay. No niin, kapteeni. Kapteeni tulee. Mä voin pitää sillä aikaa. Sä oot hyvällä, että taas. No then. <laughs> hey Benito, can you hear me? Yeah. How are you feeling, my friend? Feels awesome. How, how, what were you thinking? Go back just a little bit ago, uh, the last 10 seconds. Uh, you drive in. I'm thinking we're going to overtime. Our whole team's going to overtime. And you guys rip one with a second left. What? Talk me through that moment for just a minute. 
Yeah, it was only a couple of seconds left, and uh, I actually didn't uh, think that uh, at first that uh, I should even go to the net anymore, and was kind of just waiting for overtime. But uh, you know, the puck just bounced to me, and uh, I was in the right position at the right time, and uh, that's how it went. Right place, right time. Going back to back as you hold that trophy, does this one feel a little bit uh, more special than the last time you won? Uh, not really. It's always uh, nice to win uh, whatever tournament it is, and uh, it just feels awesome to win. Talk a little bit about uh, your goalie. Obviously, uh, having a, a great goalie uh, like FaZe back there, just playing so well defensively through these five games. Uh, just how important was it to just have him locked in for the series? Yeah, it's always uh, really important in uh, playoffs to have a great goal and uh, we, I think we have the best goal in the whole of Europe and maybe even the whole world so uh, it make, uh, makes us uh, really comfortable playing and uh, yeah it's just a big help. I gotta take you back to game four real quick uh, you guys uh, get shut out by Frolanda uh, coming out of the success you had in the first three games yesterday was there a conversation uh, in between game four and game five to shake that off and get back? Not really. We just uh, wanted to step up our game for the uh, game five. So uh, we just wanted to close the series as fast as possible, and uh, we did it. I know for us, the one second left game winning, uh, cup winning goal was probably our moment of the game of the series here. But was there a specific moment uh, in your mind that you'll always remember forever? Uh, I mean, every goal is important in playoffs, so it's impossible to say uh, a, w only a one, so uh, I don't think it, uh, it was that uh, special. <laughs> Last question here. Uh, obviously, winning ECL 22 winter, obviously spring coming up. Are you guys looking to go back to back to back champs? I mean, the answer is probably yes, right? Yeah, of course. It's uh, nice to win, but uh, it sucks more to lose, so... Uh, we just don't want to lose and uh, yeah. Anything you want to say to the fans at home that are watching you guys lift this trophy for the second time in a row? Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, watching the games and uh, for all the support. Uh, it means a lot to us and uh, it was a great tournament and uh, even a measure that we won. Thanks so much for your time and congrats. Enjoy the win. Thank you. Well, guys, with that, the number one seed all season long is defending champs. They end up going back to back. Today, I discovered I have the same mentality as Benito. It's nice to win, but it sucks yes. more to lose. <laughs> yes, I was just going to point that out. I am like, I like winning, but, you know, you hate losing more. And yeah, well. So maybe maybe one day we could win win something at this game. Who knows? Do they <laughs> make do they make the e for that? Yeah. Do they, do they make uh, esports broadcaster awards? I'd like to apply. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, gentlemen, as we look to wind things down on this particular broadcast, we do have one more award to hand out. And again, uh, we have seen, uh, you know, a treads pick up some silverware here today so far, not only as a team, but of course, Villa Poica was a forward of the season as named by the elite division players themselves. And of course, Domi won defender of the year. That leaves our final award, the goaltender of the year, because you know, you got to give the goalies love. We save arguably the best, uh, you know, the best award for last. And of course, Phase is up there. No real surprise in the final five. Shout out to Chich on ZSC Esports getting some nods there by his fellow players. Teme of IQ, of course, McSavid from Feriestad. And Nike is back for Sabo Esports. Sin, he was named the transfer of the mm -hmm. season. And, uh, you know, might just have to be the favorite for this award. I, I I think he he has to be the front runner again. These are the regular season awards. I think if you had one where you could combine the playoffs, etc., some other names would get more nods, particularly McSavid and of course FaZe. But all these guys up here, well deserving, all in different situations as well. And again, I'll have to reiterate where you said love seeing Chich up there. You know, he had a great season against a team that didn't quite, you know, with a team, sorry, that didn't quite make the playoffs, but he was, you know, had to be big for them at times. So with that, I do believe we have a drum roll for the final. <laughs> No. The final one? No, I don't.
I don't know if we do. It's a shame. But Nikkei <laughs> is the goaltender of the year to the surprise <laughs> of absolutely nobody. One of the best seasons we have ever seen from a goaltender sin. Four members of Sawo walking away with an individual award out of just six awards. Needless to say, the expectations for them a lot higher heading into next season. And uh, and who knows? I mean, it's uh, it's funny because, of course, Nikkei, a former member of H-Reds, and, uh, you know, maybe uh, looking like a somewhat similar path here, perhaps. I mean, that just kind of, to me, it's like how much, like... How good is the scouting of these H-Reds guys? I mean, we think of who's on that team, who they've had. And, of course, Nikkei, we knew he was a solid goaltender. We were a little surprised when they started to move towards FaZe and they started to have the tandem. And then, obviously, FaZe doing what he does after that Rookie of the Year kind of convinced us. But, yeah, I mean, Nikkei did phenomenally. Sabo got a heck of a pickup. And, obviously, their defensive uh, strategies really helped him. But, yeah, I mean, just under a 90 save percentage in yeah. sixes? That doesn't happen. <laughs> and Tugi, going doesn't. going to a point that you made here that I want to just highlight, you talked about, you know, what an amazing move for Nikkei to come here and, and kind of bring some level of, like, next step up for Sawo. I think that's what makes the EU and especially the ECL so special is when a player moves teams, everybody pays attention. It's like that soccer mentality that we all love is you're watching those players move. Teams stay relatively together. And when it moves, it's special. You pay attention to it. And usually it makes an impact on that other team. Absolutely. I can't help but agree. Sin, with that, at least our time here on this particular broadcast and for the 22 winter season is coming to a close. This has been one of, if not the best season I think we've had uh, the privilege of covering as the yeah. con you know the competition level continues to get better and better. The teams at the top continue to get better and better. Uh, it sets the stage for what is going to be a very interesting spring season that uh, Nick and Brandon will have a little bit more information on here at the end of the broadcast, but what a season this was. Yeah, and uh, it's always bittersweet when this comes to the end. You know, obviously our voices uh, and our mentality appreciate the break, but we know once we get into that booth, it's all smiles. It's all we're fired up. We love to watch these guys go at it, and it's always entertaining as heck, and I mean, it's just great, great, great people all the way across with, the, with how these broadcasts are put together from the players, the fans, uh, the people we work with, people behind the scenes that, you know, we'll have to give some shout outs to as well. It's just all comes together and it's a special thing to be a part of. And yeah, you'll hear Nick mention the kind of roll call a little bit later on. And we uh, uh, certainly reciprocate the uh, the sentiment there as well uh, in terms of giving thanks to people that help make this happen. There is nowhere Sin and I would rather be than right here. Again, we are quickly closing in on three years of uh of being affiliated with this uh with this brand with this company and with the people that make this league what it is and we are very very thankful for that sin the good thing is again we won't have to wait too long the spring season is coming right up but to around things off at least for sin and i again a gigantic thank you to everyone involved with this another uh, congratulations to H Reds for a simply stunning accomplishment just when you think the bar can't be raised anymore well, a team like H-Reds comes along to prove you wrong. Nick, Brandon, you guys are phenomenal. It was great to be able to work with you again. Mm -hmm. We will turn this broadcast over to you to wind things down for our winter season. Always a pleasure, you guys. It's When it's finals time, it's special. It's fun to be here, and I'm just humbled and privileged to be able to be here every single time. It's been my third series uh, finals in a row that I've been a, a part of this program, and it's just been just so special, and having Brandon along for the ride is, just makes it that much better. But Brandon, we are not done here. We're about to wrap up, but uh, everyone says, oh, it's bittersweet that winter's over. Winter has come and left, but spring's right around the corner, isn't it? When one door closes, another one opens, doesn't it, Nick? We close the door on the winter season with HREDS winning another championship, but we open the door of spring season, and now multiple, many teams have their shot to try to take that crown off of the heads of those wearing it that we see today in HREDS, and that's right, spring season, fast approaching, Nick. Sign-ups are open. 
Yeah, and if you're any other team, you don't want to have Hreds win this again. I know Hreds wants to. We talked to Benito about that. But if anybody other other team wins, then there's a grand finals. If Hreds wins, there's no grand finals. And believe you me, I want there to be a grand finals. <laughs> I don't uh, think Hreds does, but <laughs> we, we would love it for the entertainment value. But I think Hreds would be perfectly happy going in, winning another championship, or from their words, not losing or not losing one. They haven't lost many lately, and I think they'd be okay with just taking the ten thousand euros, not worrying about the grand finals and taking it home. But I know there's going to be a lot of teams in the ECL elite that are really going to be punching up and trying to uh, take down the. Um, Take down the kings of the ECL at this point, back to back for H Reds. And it's hard not to debate that they are numero uno in the ECL now in Europe with their win in five games over for Lunda. So lots of teams next season, a chance to sign up now. I know they're going to be definitely aiming to try to um, get their punch at H Reds here because right now, dominant as ever. And you said it last uh, yesterday on air. I'll make sure I reiterate it here. You said HRED's best team in the world. So that is also said. It is recorded. It is on paper. And uh, they will need to defend that title at some point in the very near future. Yeah, and I know that they are perfectly fine and always looking forward to it. The great thing about these top teams in the ECL, the teams like Havu, HREDS, Fralunda, they are plenty happy to accept a challenge. They, they, they play for that. They want to face the best. They want to be able to beat the best. As good as HREDS is, I think that they look forward to that challenge of once again having that target on their backs next season and proving why they are the champions. And you heard um, King of Apes actually say it, and Benito as well well we love to win but we hate losing more so i think that there's some teams next season maybe a team like solo a team like fetty a team like granite that kind of surprised them with the semifinals they're going to look to kind of punch up get their way to where hrs was where they saw their ascendance and got to that point a few teams are going to look to try to do that themselves as well but you have to beat the best to be the best and right now hrs is at that number one spot and at the top of the mountain Absolutely. And if you're looking for hockey in between, do not fret. There is more around the corner on Monday, 20 CET, I believe at 8 o'clock PM CET, the ECL Neo best of five finals will be right here. Twitch.tv slash sports gamer GG. So if you want uh, some more hockey action, you'll find that right here. The best in the business right alongside you for that coverage as well. Uh, but that's going to do it for us here, uh, at least for this winter season. We want to make sure we thank, first and foremost, our amazing sponsors, Wilhelm, Kovalan Lakritzi, ST Hockey. We want to thank them for their continued support and everything that they do to allow these productions to be the absolute best they can be. And we genuinely thank them for all of their long-term partnerships with us and for many, many more successful seasons to come. Uh, more importantly, we here at Sports Gamer, I want to take this time to thank the staff for all their hard work. You know, you see these two, three, four people sometimes on stage, on camera, doing what they do, but it literally cannot happen. This is a broadcast that requires many hands to make light work, to make the best work possible. It's not one person doing 18 roles. It's a lot of very specialized people that we cannot think enough. Now, those people also wear 18 hats each, but this is why the broadcast is so good. We want to thank uh, Yane, Vivi, uh, Iro, Guido, Justin, J. Dollar, I love you, Felix, Esdor, uh, Taimo, King Lime, Tugi and Sin, I, I will put my 15-year broadcasting career on this statement. Some of the absolute best broadcasters I have ever heard in esports. Those two do an astounding job. And the chemistry, three years in, absolutely remarkable. Uh, Brandon, I want to thank you, man. You have been doing this now for just over a year and a half. And uh, the meteoric skill set rise that you've been able to put forth to create some of these special pieces is undoubtedly uh, uh, priceless. And, and I can't personally thank you enough. I know the entire team says the same thing. And last but not least, 
Without this man, none of this can happen. It is uh, Kinu, I, I, the man himself. You see him bouncing in and around stages and on scene and off camera, ducking and moving. But we always see him in the background doing something. That man, uh, if there were 35 hours in a day, he would still work 35 hours in a day. He pours everything into this program to make this the absolute best it can be. So uh, we want to thank all those people. But more importantly, we want to thank you, the players and the fans uh, from signups tuning into broadcast to the tweets, the social media. I will tell you this from somebody that works uh, in a lot of places and covers all sorts of esports. The the passion the EU community for ECL puts out in the world on social media is noticed by everybody. And I want to tell you firsthand, uh, everybody sees it and it's important. And you guys rock at it. So without your support, ECL could not be where it is today. Sports Gamer could not be where it is today. And if you could do us a favor... One final tweet to close out this ECL season. Let everybody know everywhere across the world how much fun you had with the ECL, with the ECL Elite, and with Sports Gamer GG. That would be very much appreciated from not only my heart, but from everybody else back there. So, Brandon, it was a pleasure, my friend. Thanks for being along for this ride for two days. Hey, man, it was a lot of fun. I've loved watching the ECL for the past few seasons. The job that you and Sin and Tugi and everyone behind the scenes does. Truly a blessing to be a part of this on camera behind the scenes this time. Just amazing. So happy to be a part of it. And doesn't end here. We'll be back here soon for the spring season. A lot to look forward to there. It's been a lot of fun. Can't wait to look forward to the next season with spring where another team will try to take that championship away from Atra. So congratulations to them again as well. The, the phrase is not winter flowers bring or winter showers bring May flowers, but nevertheless, the winter had come and left, and now spring is on the horizon. On behalf of everybody I just mentioned, my name is Nick DeMeo, aka F5 Penguin. That is Brandon Bigsby, aka B Major, and A Treads winning back to back champions here in ECL Elite, winning over for Lunda four games to one. That's going to do it here. We'll see you next season.